Okay, in this video, we are going to go through and derive the equation of an ellipse. And in the process, we're going to see why c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. So I've typed up the standard equation. Um, it's x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. So I'm going to deal with a horizontal ellipse here. Um, and let's take a look at what the picture is so that we can agree, with, uh, agree on what we're dealing with. So here's a picture that I came up with. Um, it's an ellipse. An ellipse is the set of all points in a plane, so all these points, that when you add the distance from this point, the first focus, to this point on the ellipse, and the distance from the point on the ellipse to this focus, you always get the same number, so the distance is constant. So what we really need to do to use the definition is we're gonna need to calculate distance one here and distance two here and add them up and figure out what those are equal to, which we'll do in a second. So I put the focus at negative C0 and at C0, um, which makes the center of this ellipse 0, 0, which is the standard way to derive this thing. And then you can just shift it like you would shift any function. So this is our picture. And um, let's figure out what these uh, two distances add up to. So it's gonna be the same no matter where we move this point. Um, and that's important because what I'm gonna do is recreate this figure, but I'm gonna move the point over here to the vertex. Um, so let's, let's do that. So we have this, and I've already kind of filled things in. Um, so this is our picture from before, basically, but I've moved this point to the vertex. So the distance from the center, which is zero, zero, to the vertex is A, which means the distance from this focus, um, so the first focus, to the point is just C, the distance from the focus to the center, plus A, the distance from the center to the vertex. So that's our first distance. And then our second distance is this little distance here, which I kind of pulled out. And you can see that to go all the way to the vertex would be A. To go just to the focus would be C. So this distance here must be A minus C. So I need to add up those two distances, which I've done down here. So it's A plus C, and then plus A minus C. But A plus C plus A minus C is just 2A, which means for every point on this ellipse, the sum of the distances from the point to each focus, so that's two different distances, you add those up, you're always going to get 2A. Um, and that's a big deal. So this is enough information, if we go back here, that's enough information to actually derive the equation. So let's get started deriving it. So I'm going to use um, the CAS in the TI Inspire CAS to do all the work. All right, so distances, I'm going to define a distance formula. So it's D of, I'm going to do X comma Y, and then, uh, I don't know, A comma B. And so use colon equals square root. So that's control and then the X squared key. And then the quantity uh, x minus a, so that's like x2 minus x1, and then square it plus quantity y minus b, which is like y2 minus y1, and then square it, and press enter, it should say done, and it does. Okay, so I'm going to use the distance formula and the definition of the ellipse to come up with that equation that we saw before. So if you remember, we're looking here, um, we want to find the distance from here to here. So D1 is the distance from the point x, y to the point negative c, 0. So let's, let's do that. I'm going to call it D1. You don't really need to do that, but I'm going to. So D1 is going to be D of, um, it was x, y, and then negative c, 0. And I'm press enter, and you'll see there's just a radical thing. And then D2, if we go back to our picture, is the distance from x, y to c, 0. So let's, let's do that, D2 equals d of x comma y comma c comma zero. All right, so now if I just type d1, I get that. If I type d2, I get the other thing. All right, think about the definition. So we said it's all the points on this ellipse. Um, if you find their distance one and distance two and add them up, we always get 2a. So I'm just going to say that uh, d1 plus d2 is equal to 2a and press enter and see what happens. And it's not pretty looking, right? We have a radical plus a radical, and then it just equals 2a. Um, so we wanna actually work on this thing. 
the equation has no radicals in it. So I'm going to square both sides, I think. But um, if both radicals are on the same side, then squaring it is kind of a bad idea because I get a lot more radicals involved. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to uh, go back and say d1 is equal to 2a minus d2, which will move the radical to the other side. Now I have one radical on each side. And so I'm going to square both sides. So to do that, all you have to do is, um, you know, just go uh, squared right there. Um, and what it'll do, the Inspire understands that you want to square both sides of this thing. So I'm going to press Enter. And you can see that the left-hand side, first we get a bunch of warnings. You're going to get tons of warnings as you do this. Um, the left-hand side expanded itself. The right-hand side didn't actually expand. It just said, uh, this is what you told me to do. So what I'm going to do is menu 3, 3. I'm going to expand. And just expand the prior answer. Um, so I typed answer, but that's also uh, control and then the, minus, the negative sign, I guess. Uh, so I press enter and it expands and you can see there's still a radical, but this is actually better because there's not like a quantity being squared, but it doesn't look great because there's a lot of stuff that's not in a radical on this side. And then this side has nothing in a radical. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything on the right hand side that's not in a radical and move it to the left hand side. So to do that, what I'm going to do is just say minus, I'm going to open a parenthesis, I'm going to go up here, and then um, I'm just going to like highlight all this. So I'm holding shift as I arrow to the left. Uh, the emulator doesn't show that, but I'm holding shift and I'm pressing this key a lot um, to do this. I'm going to press enter, and it puts it in the parentheses. I'm going to press enter again, and it does it. So now there's uh, nothing on the right, well, there's this A, the negative 4A. Um, but that's a coefficient, not like a, a summer difference. So everything's on the left that I want on the left. I'm just going to go through and divide by 4 because there's a 4 in everything. Um, so that's a little simpler. There's still a radical, so I'm going to square both sides again. So square. And I mean, that's good, but I need to expand again. So you'll notice we're using expand a lot. So expand the answer. Okay, and now if we arrow through this, um, there's no more radicals, which is good. And, but there's just like a ton of stuff everywhere. So what I'm gonna do is a little, it's kind of like a trick, but if you know what you're doing, it's not really a trick. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this entire expression and I'm just gonna subtract. So I'm doing previous answer minus, I'm gonna type R-I-G-H-T, so right. I'm gonna subtract the right side of the previous answer. And what that does, um, so for example, if I have a equals 3, and I do right of answer, it's going to be 3, just the right-hand side. There's also a left, if you want to use it, left of a equals 3, and it's just a. So going back to what we have, I subtracted the left-hand, the right-hand side. So I was at this point. Let me just do it again. So I had expanded everything. Um, I want to move everything to one side, so I just did minus the right of the answer, and it gives me this. And this is uh, okay, but there's still parentheses, things to distribute, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand again. So menu 3, 3, and the answer, press enter. This doesn't look great, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave things with um, the variables on the left-hand side and move these constants over to the right-hand side. So I'm going to do, uh, I'm just going to say minus quantity. So you can do them one at a time if you want to, but I prefer to do this. This, and then press enter, and enter. OK, it doesn't look like it, but we're almost done. So now what I'm going to do is uh, if we go back to the equation we're trying to get, so back here, the equation uh, is equal to 1. So I'm going to go and, I guess, divide through by the right-hand side. And I can do the same sort of thing that I did before. I'm just going to do divided by the right of the answer. And this should give me a 1 on the right-hand side, and who knows on the left-hand side. So we get this. OK, not bad. So now let's think about it. Um, if you just look at this as a human, you see that you have a squared minus c squared 
times x squared over a squared times a squared minus c squared. And you could cancel the a squared minus c squared there. And then you have a squared times y squared over a squared times a squared minus c squared. And you could cancel the a squareds. So this is actually where b comes into play. So what I'm really thinking at this point is that uh, maybe if I let b squared equals a squared minus c squared, I can make that substitution and then this whole thing looks a lot simpler. So what I'm gonna do, and we also know A is bigger than C, if you go back uh, to any of the pictures. A is definitely bigger than C, right? Because the foci are actually inside of the ellipse. So this is a positive quantity. Um, that's kind of important, um, but you wouldn't lose out on anything if you didn't you know, consider that here. All right, so I'm gonna change this. I'm actually just gonna delete this and replace it with B squared. And then down here, do the same thing. So delete u, go b squared. We have this. And now what I'm going to do again is expand again. So menu 3, and 3, and answer. And there we go. We got x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1, um, which is the equation we were trying to derive. But there was one other thing we wanted to see. We wanted to see why c squared was equal to a squared minus b squared. But if we start with this and we add c squared to both sides and then we subtract b squared from both sides, we can see that we have our equation x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to one. And when we calculate it, c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. So the real secret there is that b squared is a substitution that we made um, and then it plays a very prominent role in the algebraic equation, but it almost plays no role at all in the geometric description of the ellipse, right? There's no C here anywhere. Uh, no, I'm sorry, there's no B here anywhere. Um, there's only A's and C's, but that's, uh, that's about it. So uh, we ran through the derivation. Let me delete these so it looks a little cleaner at the end. Uh, we got our equation. We figured out C squared is A squared minus B squared, and that's what we were trying to do. So I hope you found this helpful and good luck.